praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the Most High God, our rock and our fortress, our hiding place, the owner of our lives, we hallow your name, O gracious Lord, for today. Another glorious day, another children week that is being rounded up today. I want to thank you, Lord, for the great privilege of God Almighty to be alive. I want to thank you, Lord, for the life of our children. I want to thank you, Lord, for your wonders in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for making them champions indeed. To you be the glory in Jesus' name. Loving Father, I pray and ask, O oh God, that Father, you will do us good, that you will bless our lives through your word this morning in the name of Jesus. Especially the children that are the focus of today's ministration. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you minister to the heart of every child that will be listening to this message in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh God of mine, that you minister to the heart of us parents and guidance in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word is for all generations. Your whole word is for all kinds of people. And I'm praying, O oh God Almighty, Lord, your word that does not discriminate, O oh God Almighty, we bless every life this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, gracious Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I want to say good morning and welcome to this awesome service in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to congratulate our children that uh, are really being celebrated today. This is the last day of the children week and I want to thank God for all the activities, how the Lord has been using our children to bless our lives. It's a prayer that these children will going to be sources of blessing to our lives, to their generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord has intended them, them to be as purpose for them to be, as designed for them to be, to be champions in their generation. It's my prayer that they will all become champions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to read from the theme text. That is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Amen. The theme for this year's Children's Week is titled, I am God's Champion. I am God's champion. And I want to read a little bit further from verse 42 of our team text, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine called David by his ghost. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take, you, take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47. And the last. Then all these assemblies are know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the lost, and he will give you into our hands. Amen. I want to also read from Micah chapter 3, verse 8. Micah 3, 8. But truly I am full of power, 
by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sins. Amen. I want to title the message of today Knowing Who You Are in God. Knowing Who You Are in God. I want to thank God Almighty once again for the privilege given unto us to gather like this. I want to thank God Almighty because he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the Lord knew the end from the beginning. It is not strange to God that at a time like this, we'll be having our services online. It's, it's not strange to God. The Lord has known it ahead of time. And I want to thank God that uh, God will always make a way, you know, where it seems to be no way. Where the devil thinks he has closed the road, he has ended the matter, the Almighty God is able to make way, to make way. And I want to thank God that we have this medium to be able to have fellowship with our God and with one another on a regular basis. And I believe that in no distance time from now, the heavens will be open on us and we have the privilege of coming together to worship our God together. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to thank God Almighty for our little children. They are blessings unto us. They are blessings unto us. And they're going to be a blessing to us and a blessing to their generation. Amen. I, I bless God Almighty for the privilege given unto me. Today is Children's Day and uh, I'm, I'm like a guest to them because uh, it's not a must that as a pastor I must preach on Children's Day. You know, it's a privilege. I want to thank our beloved uh, children pastor, our beloved Sister Bola Odeleye, for giving me the privilege. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. No, our children are champions. God made them champions. You know, they are children today. They become adults tomorrow. And I want to thank God for their lives. I want to thank God for our parents. I want to thank God for our counselors who have been mightily used of the Lord, who have been vessels and instruments in the hand of the Lord in nurturing, in bringing up the children in the fear of the Lord. It's my prayer that the Almighty God, the Great Rewarder, will reward every one of us in Jesus' name. Now, they are young today. They are young today, but they are God's generals of tomorrow. And God is counting on them for greater exploits in their generation. In their generation. He has equipped them planted in them all that they will ever need to become champions, to become relevant, to become generous in their generation. They have been equipped. All that they will ever need is already inside of them. It's right inside of them. And the, the encouragement, you know, the boldness, the fearlessness, the faith to confront their Goliath is already inside of them. It's already inside of them. Amen. And the, I believe God Almighty, at the appointed time, they will all manifest. You know, the champion that they are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. These children are God's champions. And nobody must look down on them. Amen. And I pray that the Almighty God will give us parents to continue to nurture them for his own glory in Jesus' name. Now, before I look at how to become God's champion, I want us to note a few things. I want us to note a few things. Number one, don't declare yourself to be God's champion if you do not have a relationship with him. Don't declare yourself 
to be a champion if you do not have a relationship with God. Don't declare yourself to be God's champion if you don't have a relationship with him through the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I am God's champion. It's not something you just say for saying sake. For you to say, I am God's champion, you must have a relationship with him. You must have a relationship with him. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 17, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were declaring to be God's champion, they are, the, they are, they are, they are, they are God's children, that they, they belong to the Almighty God who walks wonders. They have a relationship with him. And in chapter, chapter, chapter 3, verse 25, that was proved when they were cast into the fire. Because if you declare yourself to be God's champion, it may land you into the fire. The question is, if your, your declaration as God's champion lands you in the fire, will God be there with you? So don't ever declare yourself to be God's champion if you have no relationship with God. Very important. Amen. Number two, don't claim to be God's champion if you do not know, if he does not know you. Don't claim to be God's champion if God does not know you. The question is, does God know you? In Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, God said, I know him, that means Abraham, that is Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him. I know him. So don't claim to be God's champion if God does not know you. Praise the Lord. In Judges chapter 6, verse 14, you know, let me read that. Judges chapter 6, verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. And thou shalt have, thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? God knows Gideon. Say, have I not sent thee? Go in this thy mind. The Lord knows what Gideon had. The Lord knows what he had deposited in Gideon. Praise the Lord. So God said, I have sent you. Have I not sent you? God will not send a person he does not know. God will never send you if he does not know you. God will not send any person he does not know. So don't claim yourself to be God's champion if he does not know you. Number three. Don't claim to be God's champion if you have not been proved by God's presence and power. Don't claim to be God's champion if you have not been proved by God's presence and power. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37, David said, moreover, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the prayer of the bear, he will deliver me out of thy out of the hands of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Amen. Don't claim to be God's champion if you have not been proved by God's presence and power. David said, David said, The God that delivered me from the prayer of the lion. And from the power of the bear, that same God is going to deliver me from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. Don't claim to be God's champion if you have not been proved by God's presence and power. And lastly, on that number four, don't claim to be God's champion by presumption. Don't claim to be God's champion by presumption. 
In Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to 16, we see the seven sons of Skepa. Skepa, who presumptuously went into deliverance, calling the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, but they were disgraced. They were disgraced. Don't claim to be God's champion by presumption. Amen. Be born again. You must be sure, beloved. Be born again and be sure you are born again. Be sure of your relationship with Jesus. Before you claim to be God's champion, be sure of your relationship with Jesus. Don't do things by presumption. Get to know the real thing. Don't do things by presumption. Get to know the real thing. Get to know Jesus. Get to know the power of God. Amen. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And I'm going into how, how, how does one become God's champion? How does one become God's champion? Number one, God's champions are called by God to become champions. God's champions are called by God to become champions. You must be called. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 4 to 10, God calls Samuel three times. And for those three times, he thought it was Eli, the priest that was calling him. And at the third time, Eli instructed him, if God comes calling you again, replying by saying, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. And when God came the fourth time, Samuel replied, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Beloved, you must be called. Don't answer if you are not called. Don't answer if you are not called. Don't go if you are not sent. Don't go if you are not sent. Like God told Gideon, Have not I sent thee? I've sent you. So don't go if you are not sent. And don't take the risk and confront the Goliath if you are not called. Don't take the risk. Don't take the risk. You know, and confront the Goliath if you are not called. Don't forget, I'm talking about how does one become God's champion? And what I'm talking about, I'm talking on is God's champions are called by God to become champions. So God's champions are called. Children, you are called as Samuel was. Children, listening to this, you are called as Samuel was called. You are called. Let that be registered in your heart that in this, your generation, you are called out to stand out like Samuel. See, let, let this sink into your spirit that you are a called child. You are called to perform. You are called to exert. You are called to be a good influence. You are called to be a generator changer for God. So walk towards your calling as God's champion and you'll be fulfilled. Walk towards this. Walk towards becoming a God champion. Walk towards becoming a fulfilled God champion. Like David was fulfilled. And the Almighty God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two. God's champions are anointed by God to become champions. God's champions are anointed to become champions. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12 and 13. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12 and 13. 
and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and without of a beautiful countenance, goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Anoint him, for this is he. Anointed to become a champion. God knew where he was taking David to. So he sent Samuel at that point in time to anoint him, to prepare him to become the champion he has ordained, he had been called to be. He had been called, but he needed the anointing to fulfill this. So he was anointed to become a champion. Anointed to become a deliverer of God's people. Anointed to become a deliverer of God's people. Anointed to become a destroyer of the enemies of God's people. Anointed to become a champion. So he was anointed to become a champion. Samuel that's it, verse 13 now, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed it in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Amen. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And do you know, from that moment, that he was anointed in the midst of his brethren, David became a different person. Became a different person from all his brethren. He was brought from the field where he was, so to say, abandoned. He was left alone to take care of the father's sheep. He was brought to the house, to the garden of the family of Jesus' children, and Samuel anointed him, and the Spirit of God came upon him and distinguished him, set him apart, made him completely different person from all his brethren. Beloved, the anointing of God will make you a different person from all your brethren, from all your colleagues, from all your friends, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The anointing, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Beloved, I pray and ask the Almighty God, we anoint all our children, and set them apart for the kingdom business right from this their small and little age, their young age, in Jesus' name. Amen. So David became a different person from that day forward. Hallelujah. And the work of, of the ministry, the work of the Lord, no man can do by his own power. David needed the anointing to become a champion. Champion for God. God's champion needs the anointing, needs the power of God. So he needed the Holy Ghost, he needed the Spirit of the Lord to help him to fulfill this. So the Lord rested upon him, the Holy Ghost, and made him God's champion. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, you know, the Bible said that it is not by mind, it is not by power. It is by the Spirit of the living God. The Lord knew from the beginning that there was nothing David could do by himself. He needed the anointing. He needed the help of the Holy Ghost. So he anointed him and released upon him the Holy Ghost. And he became God's champion. Praise the Lord. God's champions are anointed by God to become champion. Number three, God's champions are equipped by God to become champions. God's champions are equipped by God to become champions. Amen. I've read to us Judges, I mean, Judges chapter 6, verse 14. How God appeared unto Gideon and asked him to go in that mind, in that strength, 
because he has sent him. God champions are equipped by God to become champions. No champion goes to war with empty hands, with bare hands. They are all equipped. They need to be equipped. They must carry weapons. They must equip themselves like Goliath equipped himself with spear, with javelin, with sword, you know. So champions are equipped. But God in his own or equips, equips his own servants, his own champions. So God's servants are equipped by God to become champions. As he equipped Gideon to become a champion. Let's look at the same scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. 1 Samuel 17, 40. Let's see how God equips his champions and the weapons they use for battles. 1 Samuel 17, 40. And he took his staff in his hand and sows him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd bag with a heart, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. God champions are equipped by God to become champions. David equipped himself with five stones. The question is, the question is, what are five stones? to confront a mighty warrior like Goliath. What are five stones? If you talk about equipping oneself for war, for battle, David picked five stones from the brook. The question is, what are five stones to confront a mighty giant like Goliath? But I see five powerful names with five letter words in the five stone that David chose. Five powerful names with five letter words in the five stones that David picked or chose from the brook. And when I look at the word chose, it depicts the fact that there was other options or alternatives that involves making of choices. It shows five stones. That also means that there were other options, alternatives that involved making of choices. But David chose to pick only five stones. He made a choice of picking only five stones. There were many stones in that brook for him to pick as many as he wanted. But he chose to pick only five. The question is, why five stones and not twelve? to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Why five stones? Instead of picking or so, make, 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 making the choice of picking as much as 12, or as many as 12 stones to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Why, why, why only five stones? 
So like I said, the five powerful names I sensed in my spirit are one, Jesus. Jesus. In the team test, he said, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. I come to thee in the name of Jesus. So the number one stone, the first stone I, I feel, I think, and I believe is Jesus. He chose to pick Jesus. He chose to carry the name of Jesus. He chose to make use of the name of Jesus. And don't forget, the Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Goliath cannot withstand the name of Jesus. He has to come down. So, he picked, he chose Jesus as his weapon to confront Goliath. Number two name is the blood of Jesus, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. When I see the blood, I will pass over. My, my, my. <laughs> Character. Kampuri Masamuria. I guess he chose to apply the blood of Jesus upon himself as a man of sin on. Don't see me. As a mark of sin on, as a mark of touch not. David said to, 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 he chose to use the blood of Jesus and apply it over his life to shield him from being seen by Goliath. Goliath thought he was seeing David. Hence, he was, he, he was looking down on him. This small boy, I will not finish you. I you have not seen anything. He was not seen where. He had been covered with the blood. He was not seen where. As seen not, as touched not. Amen. And uh, he was covered with the blood of Jesus as no go area. He's covered. The destructive angel that went around the land of Egypt to destroy all the firstborn in the land of Egypt never went to the houses of the Israelites in the land of Egypt as a no-go area. As touch not, he applied the blood of Jesus over his life. Amen. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24 says, the blood of Jesus speaks better things, speaks victory than the blood of Abel. It's my prayer that our children we choose the name of Jesus, we should apply the blood of Jesus all over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. From time to time, at every point in time, they are at a crossroad. May God give them the grace to remember the name of Jesus. May God give them the grace to apply the blood of Jesus over their lives. And they shall be covered. And they shall be protected. Praise the Lord. Number three thing name I saw there is grace. 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 It shows grace. Unmerited favor. Favor that does not merit. It shows grace. You know, grace enables one to do things that are difficult and humanly impossible. That's grace. David shows grace. To my mind, the third stone was grace. To enable him to do the impossible. To enable him to face the Goliath that, that, that assess all his brothers and their brothers away. Grace. To do the impossible. Unmerited favor from the Lord. To face the Goliath. To do the unthinkable. Grace. It's my prayer that the Almighty God will grant our children the grace. My prayer that God will grant us to lean on grace, you know, rather than leaning on what we think we can do for ourselves. Grace. Grace makes you to excel and save you from disgrace. Grace makes you to excel and save one from disgrace. That was what David picked. 
God, I must not be disgraced by this giant, by, by this Goliath. He be great. So grace helped him to excel and saved him from disgrace. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And number four stone, I sense, is faith. Faith. Faith helped him to see beyond Goliath. Faith. With the eye of faith, he saw, he was able to see God as the Lord of hosts. With the eye of faith, he was able to see God, he was able to see Jesus as the God of hosts, as the Lord of hosts. He was able to see God as the one in control of the battle. With the eye of faith. With the eye of faith, he saw he was able to see God giving him the head of Goliath. Faith. He said, God will give me your head. God will deliver your head into my hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read verse 46 of our text. Verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your hair from you. My, 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 my. Hey, with, with the eye of faith, he was able to see God delivering the head of Goliath into his hands. So to my mind, the first stone represents faith that David shows from the brooks. Hallelujah. That God will deliver you, will give your head, will deliver your head into my hand. That God will help me. With your own sword, I'm going to cut off your head. Faith. And the last stone, the fifth stone, to my mind, is glory. 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 Anything that does not end in glory is not worth doing. Anything that will not bring glory to God is not worth it. Amen. So he saw God being glorified in the battle. My man. He saw God being glorified in battle. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, grace, faith, will end me bringing glory to God. So he saw God being glorified in the battle. That the end of this battle shall bring glory to God. And when God is involved, beloved, your little becomes much. When God is involved, your little effort becomes much. When God is involved, five stones are too much for you to bring down the head of your Goliath. When God is involved, you don't need to exhaust all the five stones. The first one, Jesus will bring down the head of your Goliath. Glory be to God. But David over equipped, God over equipped David by laying upon his hand to choose five stones. It was over equipped for the battle. It's my prayer for our little children. God will over equip you for all the battles of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For all our children, it's my prayer for you. The Lord will over equip you for all the battles you will ever come across in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the last one is God's champions are protected by God to become champions. God's champions are protected by God to become champions. Hallelujah. Now, King Saul made 21 attempts to kill David. 21 good attempts. A whole king made 
to kill David, whom we are considering today as his champion. But God protected him from all the 21 attempts that were made by a, by, by a king, by King Saul. God protests, God's champions are protected by God to become champions. Hallelujah. The first attempt he made was to cast a javelin at David, wanting to smite him to the wall, wanting to pin him to the wall. But the Almighty God helped David to escape. And that he did two times. Wanting to smite him, wanting to strike him with a javelin. But the Lord helped him. The Lord protected him from that. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 11. Let me quickly read that. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. Two good times. Saul made an attempt to kill David with a javelin. And God protected him. God's champions are protected by God to become champions. And second thing, second attempt I want to talk about was through Michal, a daughter, and the Philistine. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 20 to 27, the daughter of Saul, Michal, fell in love with David. She loved David. She loved David and she wanted to marry David. And uh, that got to the notice of the king, King Saul. And King Saul had been looking for opportunity to kill David. So he now talked to his servant to go and whisper to David that my daughter is in love with you, that she wants to marry you. And the servant went to David and said, David, the princess loves you and she wants to marry you. And her father, the king, is also interested that you get married to his daughter. <laughs> oh my God. And David said, ah, who am I to be a father, a son-in-law to the king? I am from a very humble, very poor background. I am a very poor background, from a humble background. How can you imagine me becoming a son-in-law to the king? No, forget about it. And they went back to the king in Saul to, to tell him that this was the reply of David that he said he was from a very poor background that he can't marry or that he can't afford to pay the, the, the bride price, can't afford to pay the dowry. And King Saul sent them back to him that I don't need any bride price. <laughs> the only bride price I need is 100 foreskins, 100 foreskins of the Philistines as the bride price. Hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Uh -uh. For you to get the foreskin of a man. Especially in time of war. <laughs> First, you must kill the man. You have to kill the man. You have to strip him naked and begin to cut up the foreskin. And Saul said, all that I need and all that I want at bright price is on the foreskin of the Philistines, our enemies. And I want to thank God for the anointing that was already upon David. He had been mightily anointed for war. So he said, if that is the case, no problem. I will go for that. Amen. I go for that. And he went and fought the Philistines and killed 200 and brought their foreskin to King Saul. Amen. And the plan was that in the course of trying to bring 100 foreskins 
of the Philistines, their enemy, he must have been killed. He may not escape it. If he can kill 100 people and cut off their foreskins and bring them to me, he must have been a dead person. He must have, must have been killed. So his plan was to kill. But God protected David in that battle. And he was able to kill not only 100, 200, and brought them to King Saul. Amen. God protected him against the Philistines. The Lord will protect our children against their enemies in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will disgrace. The Lord will put to shame the enemies of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. The power that want to abort their destiny, the Lord will frustrate their cancers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the third attempt I want to talk about is the fact that Saul went to seek for David. He said, did David must die. Don't forget, I'm talking about God champions are protected by God to become champions. So King Saul, in this case, in First Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 and 2, went with 3,000 chosen men, selected men, who are skillful in battle. 3,000 to go and seek for David in the cave where he was hiding. But the Lord protected David. The Lord shielded him. He was covered with the blood of Jesus. So much that Saul and the 3,000 soldiers part the cave, they couldn't see David. And where they were taking cover, David saw them. He went there and cut off the skin of the king. God protects his champions. God's champions are protected by God to become champions. Beloved, I pray for my children, I pray for our children. The Almighty God will divinely protect our children in the name of Jesus and the plan and purpose of God for their life to become champions in their generation to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. God's champions are protected by God to become champions. In Daniel chapter 3, from verse 15 down all to 25, the Lord protected his champions, his children, Shadrach, Mishra, and Abednego, in that fire. They boasted in the name of the Lord. They said, Our God is able to help us. Our God is able to protect us for us to fulfill our destiny. So when they were cast into the fire, in verse 25 of Daniel chapter 3, the Bible says, Jesus, the Son of God, entered into the fire with them. They were protected. And in Daniel chapter 6 also, Daniel was cast into the, into the dead. The Lord protected him. The Lord shielded him. The Lord preserved him from being beaten, from being torn into pieces by the lions. God protect, God's champions are protected by God. Beloved, they are protected. Children, they are protected by the power that is in the name of the Lord. And you shall fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Even lastly, lastly, our Lord Jesus Christ was protected by God. God protected by God in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. You know, when King Aaron was after the life of Jesus, when he was born, you know, the angel appeared unto, unto Mary, unto Joseph, carry this child, and you go to the land of Egypt. That is that's it, because King Aaron is after him. Is God's champion and he must be protected by God to become a champion, to become the leader, to become the savior of the world. His destiny, no error can abort. God's champions are protected by God to become champion. Children, I speak to your life. You are protected and the protection of God want to rest upon you, to shield you, to preserve you, to fulfill your destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need to know who we are in God. Our children are born champions. The young lion does not start to learn the act of smartness and bravery. The young lion, they don't just begin to learn how to be smart or to be brave. They were born to be brave. They were born brave. They were born smart. 
Amen. So, so it is with us, so it is with our children in Jesus Christ. You are more than conquerors. You are more than conquerors. Know who you are in God and declare the same with confidence and assurance and the Lord will back you up. David declared, you come to me with sword, with spear, with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. That this battle is not man, it's God. I pray that the Almighty God will grant us the grace and the boldness to know who we are in Jesus and to declare the same in the face of challenges and the Almighty God, who will never leave nor forsake us, will stand by us and glorify his name in our lives, in the life of our children, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to congratulate once again our little children, our children. Congratulations for this wonderful uh, year, Children's Week that is being rounded up today. This, by this time next year, none of you children have been missing in the mighty name of Jesus. And we parents, by the grace of God, the Almighty God will keep us to be able to nurse this one for him. And none of us have been missing in the name of Jesus. And those of us who are married and trusting God for, for, for your own children, I believe God for you. The Almighty God will visit you in no distance time from now. And you will carry your babies. You also have your children. Your table is surrounded by children. And your joy shall be full. The name of the Lord in your life shall be glorified forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you once again. I want to appreciate you for this time given unto us to share your word together. I pray, Lord, that your word will do us good. Let your word, O oh God, lift us up. Let your word grant us insight. Let your word bring encouragement. Let your word, O oh God Almighty, restore lost hopes, O oh God. Let your word strengthen us, O oh God Almighty, in our inner man, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for our children, they shall be champions indeed. These are the God's champions indeed in the name of Jesus. These are the God's champions in their generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I mark them with the blood of Jesus Christ as Tosnos, as, as, as no-go area for the wicked one, for the Goliath of their time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, I thank you. For our children workers, I bless your name for their life. I pray for grace. Oh God, continue to nurse this one for you. Grant unto them in the name of Jesus. As you bless the midwives in, in Egypt that, that took delivery of the, of, of the Israelite uh, uh, wives, uh, women, that they would not listen to the counsel, the, the command of the king to kill the male children. And you, you build homes for them. You build houses for them. I pray for our children workers. Lord, you will build their life. You will build their home. You will build their businesses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for our parents, oh God, the grace, oh God, to, to guide our children alive in the way of the Lord. Grant unto us parents in the name of Jesus. I pray that as parents, we will not fail you. We will not fail our children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, I thank you. Blessed be your great name. By this time next year, O oh God, when we shall meet, O oh God, I pray and declare, none of us have been missing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, merciful Father, for answer prayers. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.